condensation pouring off the rocket. That is totally normal. Uh, again, I feel like I have to explain this over and over, but that's why we're here. We're here to help you understand what's going on and, and you know, help you. I always feel like, you know, the, the more you learn about the stuff, the easier it is to be excited. So what you're seeing, that's not smoke or anything. That's just condensation. That's Most of it is from the liquid oxygen uh, boiling off. It actually gets too warm inside the tanks because, you know, the, the ambient temperature out here in California. I had I did a quick in-my-head conversion last night, and I said it, it was about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and I, I, th I think I said it was 20 degrees Celsius. It's more like 10 degrees Celsius. So, uh, yeah, it's it's fairly warm compared to the temperature of liquid uh, liquid oxygen, which is about minus 183 degrees Celsius. And as it boils off, as it, as it turns into a gas, it expands about 1,000 times. So you will see the rocket just continuing to vent out really cold gaseous oxygen. And when that comes in contact with the air, it makes for those beautiful clouds. So that's totally normal, totally fine. If it, Yeah, so, so just, just a fun thing to kind of look at and keep in mind. Man, look at, I love how that shot, you almost don't see <laughs> the rocket because it's just there's so much condensation around it. But, yeah, that payload fairing. I love this shot. It's really fun, too, because when it uh, the, the currently you can kind of see on the right side of the rocket there, that is the strong back, the, the thing that holds on to the rocket. And when it lets, there's little clamp arms that are kind of holding on to it during most of the fuel up. But around T-minus five minutes, they actually open that arm up and then begin to recline the strong back. And that, that allows it for it to... Uh, basically be, be in launch preparation. And that, that gives room for the umbilicals to be able to rip away as the, as the rocket ascends. I just think that's super cool. So let's keep going here. We've got a handful of, of great questions from everybody. Um, quick reminder, of course, you know, if you guys have good questions, like, you know, as, as our mods caught the, the correction there from Scott Manley, feel free to just put them in chat. And uh, if you ask a good question, uh, we'll hopefully have some time to address it on air. So... Uh, and I guess even before we really start the show, I better start off again by, I, I have to say this, and this is just from from me. They, I swear that the people at Firefly do not ask for me to say this. I need to say thank you to Firefly for allowing us to do this. This is pretty unprecedented um, to be able to, uh, oh, we, we have shot, there's the, the teams at Firefly. Just a huge thank you to all of them for not only building and operating a rocket and getting ready to launch it here in California, but also for sharing it with us and allowing us to stream it for you guys. I mean, that is huge. You know, this is a demonstration mission. They're definitely being extremely open about all this stuff, and it just really means a lot to, to me as an aerospace fan. I believe hopefully to all of you as aerospace fans to be able to, to you know, just watch something like this. That's just super, super, super cool. So, yeah, I just wanted to, to keep that in mind. Just if you, if you want, say thank you, Firefly, for allowing us to do this because... Without them, obviously, without this kind of cooperation, we would not have this ability to bring 4K video to you guys, which is something I'm really, really proud of. So, uh, yeah, just a, a, another reminder. If you have a 4K device, a television or a monitor that's 4K, crank that setting up and enjoy because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. So you can really start to see all the little details and all of the little things on the vehicle. Pretty amazing. 2022, man. People just out there with 4K everything. So this is... a. Uh, from Commander Sonak, we better keep it right here in this view, or maybe the other one. I hope the pointy end is up and the flamey end is down. I think it's that time. We're coming up on T minus 40 minutes. It's as good a time as any to do a pointy end up, flamey end down check. So this is probably the perfect view. You get the, the full shot of the rocket, and you can definitely tell here from this vantage point, as a rocket orientation specialist myself, uh, you know, I'd, I'd call myself like a prosumer version of a rocket orientation specialist. I can definitely confirm, though, that from this view that the pointy end is up and the flamey end is down. And that's another one of those things. How Can you believe we have engine cams like this? That is just absolutely insane to me. Come on. That's another thing. Say thank you, Firefly, for letting us have engine cams. That is just simply crazy. Uh, all right, let's keep going here for you guys. Um, let's see. I, I did see we had – this is kind of fun. I just wanted to share this just because this – cracks me up and makes me happy and, and thank you to uh to adrian uh saying oh karen's in and sweets fireflies home base in california here supporting we're happy to have your family be part of our family go uh go off so yeah there's oh, oh karen's in and sweets is where a lot of the employees are staying and they've been uh it's just fun to see that they're cheering on their their friends that they've probably grown quite accustomed to out here in uh in lompoc so by the way i have a small quick rant this is unscripted as, as this whole thing is. This whole thing is unscripted. Is it Lompoc, Lompoc, or Lompoc? 
I, I, I hear most people locally say Lompoc, but it's two, they're just O's, yet you're pronouncing the O's differently. It's o, an O and a, an A and an O. I, I don't know. Don't get me started. I got myself started. I'm, I'm very sorry. All right. So, um, okay. This is a good question from David Marshall. What launches on the West Coast are coming up that everyone would recommend trying to view in person? Well, a, a really exciting one that's coming up is this one. In T minus 40 minutes, if you're within <laughs> eyesight of this launch, be sure you look out because uh, this one is on the West Coast ready to launch in T minus 38 minutes and 50 seconds. But other than that, there's an upcoming, well, there's a Starlink launch on Monday here from Slick 4E. Uh, there's also, I, I believe in November is going to be the last Atlas launch from the West Coast. It's an end of an era that the last time the Atlas V uh, last Atlas is going to launch from Vandenberg, which is uh, they just had the last Delta IV launch, and now they're going to have the last Delta uh, Atlas V launch. So um, it's a it's a history kind of coming to an end as, as ULA gets ready to start launching their Vulcan rocket from here. So um, that would be a fun one to see, just because it's it's history. You know, it's definitely one of those milestones. That's uh, yeah, just sort of. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it it's means it's progress, but, you know, for me, I never did get to see, I never saw Delta IV Heavy from here. I really wish it would have timed out that I was here when it launched, but here we are. Yeah, there's there's a handful. I, I You know, spaceflightnow.com has a great uh, list. We are, Our website also, upcoming launches, everydayastronaut.com. You can see upcoming launches and see which ones are from from Vandenberg. But, yeah, those, are, those would be ones that I would say, depending on your time frame, but the Atlas V launch would be hard to beat. So, all right, um... Um, let's keep going here. Um, okay, this is a great question from Sorish. Uh, why was there a green flame yesterday at the time of engine ignition? That is fantastic. Um, that's a, it's, uh, a, a pyrophoric fluid called TTEB, triethyl aluminum, triethyl boring. And what it is, is uh, they basically will flow that into the combustion chamber along with the liquid oxygen. Because it's pyrophoric, it means when it comes in contact with oxygen, it will spontaneously combust. It's, it's kind of like maybe you've heard of hypergols, hypergolic fuels, and that's when they, the fuel in the oxidizer will, will come in contact with the combust. And some rockets use that as their entire fuel. A lot of rockets from the Soviet Union ran on... Uh, on hypergolic fuels. And a lot of uh, in-space systems will use uh, hypergolic fuels. But this is a pyrophoric. So it's kind of similar, but they just use it at startup to get a, a nice clean, get the engine going and all that stuff. And then once there's stable, com you know, once there's a, a constant flame, they, they start flowing fuel in. So the fuel has, has a, you know, an ignition source already and they'll have a nice clean startup. So that is totally normal to see the green flash at the beginning of engine ignition. Um, you actually notice that uh, as well on the Falcon 9, when the Falcon 9 takes off and when the Falcon 9 relights its engines, uh, you know, like coming in for a re-entry or a landing burn, you will notice that green flash as well. That is that same thing, the TTEP, triethyl aluminum, triethyl boring. Yeah, um, got to just say thank you so much to, to Brock86. I appreciate that. We're, we're trying our best out here to just... Uh, you know, uh, keep up the, the spirits as it's, it is getting chilly again tonight, but it's, it's not too bad, but uh, I appreciate it. We're having fun out here, though. We're, we're making the best use of our time in between these launch attempts. Uh, not a bad place to be. You know, we're out here underneath the, uh, an old NASA hangar. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool place to be. It's really cool history out here at Vandenberg. Uh, I feel like there's, there's so much, you know, like, like we mentioned, the rocket that we're uh, seeing on the pad right now is on Slick 2, which is... Uh, which was where the Delta II was taking off before this. And now, you know, Firefly came through, and they if you would have seen what the, the launch pad used to look like with Delta II compared to this, this is very stripped down, very, very, very clean. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So, um, so, yeah, it's... But the, the fun thing to remember, too, is Vandenberg just has a ton of history. You know, we talked about the space shuttle having the opportunity to... They were working on Slick 6, where the Delta IV Heavy just took off the other day. That was going to be launched. They were trying to launch it from Vandenberg at one point until the Challenger disaster, unfortunately, uh, kind of totally shifted the entire space shuttle program. But there's, yeah, there's a lot of history out here. And actually, we probably, we probably should roll a little video here. Um, there's the, uh, Del the <laughs> Space Launch Delta 30 did give us uh, a little video talking about some of the, the support that they do out here because they provide the, the range clearance and the tracking cameras and a lot of support out here. And it's just been awesome to be on base. So let's roll that video. 
Vandenberg Space Force Base's top priority is to assure access to space and safety for all of our launch partners, including Firefly. The mission of Firefly is to make space for everybody. And what that means is to allow access to space for even the smaller payloads. We're here at Slick 2 getting ready for our second flight of the Alpha vehicle. We're very excited about it. It's really been great working with the range and the base on safety, flight safety, public safety, pretty much all aspects, getting ready for a mission. Yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. I mean, it, it was fun too because we actually get to see some of the the feeds from the tracking cameras, and they're infrared cameras, so they can see. You know, right now we do have a pretty major marine layer. See, here's one of the tracking cameras here. Uh, what's awesome is that we were seeing the tracking cam guys uh, earlier, or people who are in charge of the tracking cams. They were actually looking at the moon through the clouds. It was unbelievable. They were tracking the moon, and. Not only was it smooth, but you could see straight through the clouds in really great detail. I know it doesn't look like a ton here because it is infrared, but uh, when this thing lights up, we'll be able to see straight through the clouds because of these infrared cameras. So that's pretty darn awesome. I'm not sure we're going to see much here from our vantage point, which gives us a, a, a perfect question here from Orion asking, Tim, how far are you from the launch site? So we're about seven miles, a little over 11 kilometers away from the launch pad here. Um, uh, yeah, again, outside of... Um, an old NASA hangar, not a bad place to be. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. But there's a little bit of a mountain in between us and where the launch pad is. The main thing is we had to be out here just to be able to, you know, tie into the NASA building for the fiber optic lines and all of the, the things to support the show here. But uh, we should have we Yesterday, when they did the engine ignition before uh, the automatic abort, uh, we could hear it. We could easily hear it, actually. It was quite a decent little rumble. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited because that definitely means when this thing uh, lifts off here, hopefully in 32 minutes and 10 seconds, that, uh, that hopefully, you know, we'll easily be able to hear it. And another fun milestone to look forward to, guys, we are all about 12 minutes away from the go, no-go poll. So that should uh, help us understand for sure where the teams are at and if they're working any issues. And hopefully we just hear a bunch of goes across the board, all green. And, yeah, it should be pretty awesome. So, um, yeah, I, I got to thank Vanguard here celebrating 18 months of membership saying Launchtoberfest. Now, that's what I can get behind. And again, remember, right now, at this exact moment, it is September. But the good news is the T0 is going to be taking place just after midnight, getting us firmly into October by a full, solid minute. And that's what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, also, thank you, Zaria, for the, uh, for the tip. That's much appreciated. So, um, Let's see here. This is, uh, this is a good question from Musical Wolves, our friend Musical Wolves. Thank you so much for tuning in. Always fun to see Musical Wolves in chat. What happens to the fairings? Do they splash down and sink since they aren't recovering, or do they burn up and reentry? So most likely, the fairings, which is the nose cone of the rocket, that's what you know, encapsulates the payload. So inside that nose cone is the payload. The, one of the biggest reasons for these fairings is literally just to protect the payload from the extreme aerodynamic forces. You know, imagine... Uh, you know, even imagine if you had like a sensitive payload on the front of like a, a fighter jet going through the atmosphere. Now imagine going even faster in the amount of pressure that's, you know, be, would be, uh, you know, putting put on that payload. So they encapsulate it in a nice aerodynamic nose cone. And then once it's in space, obviously, there's no more atmospheric pressure. There's no more any of that. So they just, they just peel away the fairing and then they'll continue off into space, and, uh, and that not only frees up weight, but it, it also then exposes the payload to be able to be deployed once uh, it's the proper time. So, uh, yeah, the, the payload, and I don't think most payload fairings, even, you know, because obviously SpaceX has, has figured out a way to recover them. They actually have little cold gas thrusters to help steer and orient them to be able to, you know, maintain proper orientation through reentry. But the big thing about payload fairings is their, their surface area is so big and their mass is so light that they generally will slow down a lot in the upper atmosphere, and there's a really good chance that they can come down relatively intact, um, but if they're not made to float, you know, they'll likely just sink to the bottom of the ocean. So um, I'm not sure, I can't say like if they'll burn up or if they'll break up or what will happen to them, but they are so lightweight. Kind of think of a, a classic like feather versus a dropping a, a feather versus dropping a pencil. You know, you'll see uh, one's a lot more dense, has lower surface area, and the payload fairing itself is 
lightweight, big surface area. So it, it should uh, survive the re-entry because it, it is coming in pretty, you know, it's coming in, it's actually going to go a little bit higher, a little bit faster than the first stage because payload, the, uh, the fairings separate after uh, stage step. So, all right. Um, Let's see. This is a, a good question here from Johnny, and thank you so much for uh, for the, the generous donation. Great work, everyone. Keep it pointy end up. Do you or anyone know about ice buildup on the rockets? Ice thickness and weight? How much shakes off during ascent? Just wondering. So I, I, I think it's relatively thin. I, I don't know any, you know, I've never heard um, specifications on, like, exactly how much weight or how much mass it adds to have that little layer of ice. It's probably not that much. You know, you can still pretty much see through it. We can actually still see the Firefly logo underneath it on the first stage. So you can see there the first stage, if you go, if you see the little A at the bottom of the rocket, by the way, I should point this out, those are part of the, the engine covers and stuff like that uh, down near the thrust section. And, uh, or maybe th that might not be the actual engine covers. This might just be the, yeah. Anyway, it, it says A, L, P, H, and then if you keep going, A again. So it actually spells out alpha on all four corners. Uh, five letters, but only four corners. Pretty darn cool. I think, see, there's the L. Yeah, I don't know if the other one will show it too much. But yeah, it actually spells out, out yeah, there's H. So, so P is behind the transporter erector. That's, that's pretty cool. We can almost read it all the way there, uh, just straight from our camera views. So um, yeah, so that's, uh, what was I saying? Ice? Yeah, okay. So uh, from the A, you'll see that the, the rocket is, is black. That's because that's where the RP-1, the fuel, is held in that tank there. But then the first stage actually keeps going all the way through that white, and that white is the liquid oxygen tank. So that's why, you know, liquid oxygen extremely, extremely cold. It's sitting in there so cold that the, you know, the atmosphere here, the, the humidity in the atmosphere, uh, you know, I can literally, I don't know if you can see, but, like, it's, it is, it is damp. So obviously if this was, imagine if you had like a, a piece of dry ice underneath this aluminum table here that I'm sitting at, I would form an ice layer as well. So that's the exact same thing we're seeing on the rocket. Now this rocket is carbon composite Hello. with a uh, thin layer of cork and then it is painted black. Um, I did not realize that when we were on air last time or two. Uh... Okay. Good morning again. Welcome to us channel space talk space talk to aap sabhi ka swagat hai ek all live stream mein jahan pe hum dekhenge firefly aerospace company ka alpha rocket ka launch let's see first of all okay first of all we discuss about the overview of this mission and the company name the company about and after that we can go through with the launch okay first of all discuss about the company the company name is firefly firefly aerospace a company ka naam hai ek private space company hai jo usa ki hai i think usa ki hai kya don't know firefly aerospace okay Let, uh, let's discuss about the company the firefly aerospace company hai usa ki I don't know USA के बोल रहा हूँ बार बार। I think USA की है। Yes yes USA की है। हाँ तो इनका aim है कि small satellite को orbit में भेजना तो उनके लिए उस लिए उन्होंने एक rocket बनाया alpha rocket। This alpha rocket it is a second testing of alpha rocket। एक बार और test किया गया था 2021 में September में जो orbit तक नहीं पहुँच पाया था fail हो गया था। तो उसके बाद ये second test है जहाँ पे इस alpha rocket का testing होगा कि ये orbit पे पहुँच पाएगा कि नहीं। uh, इसमें मिशन का नाम रखा गया है टू द ब्लैक दिस इज द मिशन नेम ऑफ टुडेस अल्फा रॉकेट लॉन्च एंड दिस इज लॉन्च फ्रॉम वेदरबर्ग स्पेस फोर्स बेस यूएसए में है जो वहां से लॉन्च किया जा रहा है पेलोड कैपेसिटी की बात करें अभी पेलोड कैपेसिटी पेलोड कैपेसिटी की नहीं सॉरी सॉरी एक्सट्रीमली सॉरी ओके इसमें बात करते हैं कि क्या ले जा रहा है लोअर अर्थ ऑर्बिट में तो दो क्यूब सैटेलाइट है और पांच पीको सैटेलाइट है जो क्यूब सैटेलाइट से भी छोटे होंगे उनको ये ऑर्बिट पे पहुंचाया जा रहा है तो टोटल मास की बात करें तो 35 केजी का ये पूरा सैटेलाइट है पूरा सैटेलाइट है जो ऑर्बिट में पहुंचाया जा रहा है इस मिशन में वैसे तो इस मिशन का प्राइमरी गोल ये है कि ये रॉकेट 
ऑर्बिट तक पहुंच पाता है कि नहीं तो इसको टेस्ट करना ये सेकंड टेस्ट ऑफ अल्फा रॉकेट है एंड यस दिस इज नॉट अ रीयूजेबल रॉकेट फर्स्ट स्टेज और सेकंड स्टेज दो स्टेज का रॉकेट है जो रीयूजेबल नहीं है तो फर्स्ट स्टेज इसका पैसिफिक ओशन में गिर जाएगा अब डिस्कस कर लेते हैं अल्फा रॉकेट के बारे में जो अल्फा रॉकेट लॉन्च हो जाए इस मिशन में जो आपके स्क्रीन पे सामने है अभी स्क्रीन पे जो सामने है वो इंजन की फोटोग्राफ है नीचे चार इंजन लगे हुए हैं आगे डिस्कस करेंगे कि कौन से इंजन लगे हुए हैं और कौन से फ्यूल पे काम करते हैं और कितना थ्रस्ट प्रोड्यूस करते हैं सी लेवल पे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अगर कैमरा स्विच एंगल चेंज होता है तो आपको अल्फा रॉकेट देखने को मिलेगा जो स्क्रीन पर विजिबल है यस यस दिस दिस वन दिस इज द अल्फा रॉकेट द फायर फ्लाई एयर स्पेस फर्स्ट रॉकेट नेम्ड एज अल्फा रॉकेट इसकी अगर लेंथ की बात करें टोटल लेंथ की ट्वेंटी नाइन पॉइंट फोर मीटर लेंथ है इसकी और डायमीटर की बात करें तो वन पॉइंट एट मीटर का डायमीटर है तो इट्स अ नॉट अ वेरी बिग बट इट इज अ बिग रॉकेट आई वुड से बिकॉज फायर फ्लाई एयर स्पेस कंपनी का एम ये है कि छोटे सेटेलाइट को ऑर्बिट में पहुंचाने के लिए मतलब तो छोटे सेटेलाइट को छोटे रॉकेट बनाना पड़ेगा तो अभी तक आ, पूरे वर्ल्ड में आ, अर्थ की बात करें तो उसमें कई कंपनियां जो छोटे रॉकेट बना रही हैं जैसे कि रॉकेट लैब स्मॉल सेटेलाइट लॉन्च वहीकल बना रही है बनाई है जिसका नाम है इलेक्ट्रॉन अपने इंडियन स्टार्टअप में है स्काई रूट है अग्निकुल है तो इनके अगर लेंथ की बात करें तो ओवरऑल लगभग एवरेज लेंथ होती है 24 मीटर के आसपास पर जो फायर फ्लाई एरोस्पेस कंपनी का जो रॉकेट है जो आपके सामने स्क्रीन पे है अभी इस वक्त तो नहीं है जो स्क्रीन पे छोटा सा है वो 29 मीटर लॉन्ग है तो अगर कंपैरिजन की बात करें तो जितने भी छोटे स्मॉल सेटेलाइट लॉन्च वहीकल हैं उसमें से सबसे बड़ा है ये <laughs> तो इंटरेस्टिंग एंड डायमीटर की बात हम लोग कर चुके हैं वन मीटर का डायमीटर है और एक टू स्टेज रॉकेट है और फर्स्ट स्टेज में चार इंजन लगे हुए हैं सेकेंड स्टेज में वन इंजन लगा हुआ है और दोनों ही इंजन आर पी वन और लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन पे काम करता है ये सेम फ्यूल है जो स्पेसएक्स अपने मर्लिन इंजन पे काम करता है जो फैल्कन नाइन रॉकेट है और अब बात करते हैं रॉकेट के बारे में रॉकेट इंजन के बारे में जो नीचे फर्स्ट स्टेज में चार इंजन लगे हुए उसका नाम है रावीर वन इंजन जो 184 एट्टी फोर किलो न्यूटन का थ्रस्ट प्रोड्यूस करता है एक इंजन और अगर कंपेरिजन की बात करें तो जो रॉकेट लैब की कंपनी है इलेक्ट्रॉन रॉकेट वो काफ़ी छोटा है 24 मीटर के आसपास उसमें यूज़ किया जाता है रदर फोर इंजन और उसका किलो किलो न्यूटन थ्रस्ट है 30 किलो न्यूटन थ्रस्ट और इसका है एक इंजन लेकिन उसमें नाइन इंजन लगाए रहते हैं इलेक्ट्रॉन रॉकेट में नाइन इंजन लगे रहते हैं फर्स्ट स्टेज में और इन्होंने चार इंजन लगाए हुए हैं और इसका थ्रस्ट है 184 और जो इलेक्ट्रॉन रॉकेट का है वो एक इंजन प्रोड्यूस करता है 30 किलो न्यूटन तो काफ़ी बड़ा इंजन भी है इनके पास और काफ़ी बड़ा रॉकेट भी है लेट्स सी कि ये ऑर्बिट तक तो पहुंच पाता ही नहीं क्योंकि इलेक्ट्रॉन रॉकेट तो लगभग पच्चीस या तीस बार आई थिंक लॉन्च कर चुके हैं जो ऑर्बिट पर पहुँच गए वो काफ़ी तेज है ओके okay, अब डिस्कस करते हैं सेकेंड स्टेज में जो इंजन यूज किया जा रहा है सेकंड स्टेज में इंजन यूज किया जा रहा है लाइटनिंग वन इंजन ये नाम है लाइटनिंग वन इंजन जो 70 किलो न्यूटन का थ्रस्ट प्रोड्यूस करता है उसमें एक ही इंजन लगा हुआ है तो अब बात करते हैं इस रॉकेट की कैपेबिलिटी के बारे में कि कितना कैपेबल है कितना मास लोअर अर्थ ऑर्बिट में ले जा सकता है तो इसकी कैपेबिलिटी थोड़ी सी ज़्यादा है स्मॉल सेटेलाइट लॉन्च वहीकल के कंपेरिजन में क्योंकि ये लगभग 1170 हज़ार के जी का पेलोड 200 किलोमीटर के ऑर्बिट तक पहुंचा सकता है ये कंपनी का एम है लेकिन अभी तक दो ही बार टेस्ट किया गया है एक ही बार टेस्ट किया गया जो फेल हो गया था ये सेकंड रॉकेट टेस्टिंग है देखते हैं अगर ये पहुंचा पाता और दूसरा है कि लगभग 700 किलो का पेलोड ये पाँच किलोमीटर के ऑर्बिट तक पहुँचा सकता है तो ये बहुत ज़्यादा है स्मॉल सेटेलाइट लॉन्च वहीकल के कंपेरिजन में तो अगर ये होता है तो अच्छी बात है क्योंकि इलेक्ट्रॉन रॉकेट की बात करें तो वो 100 से 300 केजी का ही पेलोड 500 किलोमीटर के ऑर्बिट तक पहुंचा सकता है लेकिन ये 700 और साढ़े सात केजी का पेलोड भेज सकता है तो अच्छी बात है एंड डिस्कस अबाउट द मटेरियल विच यूज इन अल्फा रॉकेट दे आर यूजिंग द कार्बन फाइबर कंपोजिट विच इज़ ऑल्सो यूज बाई द इलेक्ट्रॉन रॉकेट इन रॉकेट लैब कंपनी तो रॉकेट लैब कंपनी जो अपने इलेक्ट्रॉन रॉकेट को वो भी कार्बन कंपोजिट बनाती है उसका फ़ायदा ये रहता है कि काफ़ी अच्छा स्ट्रेंथ मिलता है 
और लाइट वेट रहता है क्योंकि रॉकेट के लिए लाइट वेट जरूरी है और इन्होंने भी कार्बन कंपोजिट यूज किया है स्लाइटली महंगा होता है क्योंकि मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में थोड़ी डिफिकल्ट आती है पर मैनेजेबल है इट्स ऑल अबाउट द मिशन प्रोफाइल वॉट दे वॉन्ट सो दिस इज द ओवरऑल ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ दिस कंपनी एंड द मिशन विच दे आर लॉन्चिंग द सेटेलाइट एंड द वी टॉक अबाउट द रॉकेट वी टॉक अबाउट द इंजन वी टॉक अबाउट द फ्यूल इट्स ओवर ओवर नाउ वी कैन इंजॉय द लाइफ स्ट्रीम जस्ट आई वॉन्ट आई वॉन्ट टू नो दैट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल दैट एवरी डे एस्ट्रॉट जो आपको लोगों देख रहा है जो एवरी डे एस्ट्रॉट है टीम डॉट वो ऑफिशियली ब्रॉडकास्ट कर रहे हैं इनके लॉन्च को तो इसलिए ये ऑफिशियल वेबसाइट है ऑफिशियल ब्रॉडकास्ट है अल्फा रॉकेट का जो आप स्क्रीन पे देख रहे हैं तो इसलिए एवरी डे एस्ट्रॉट टीम डॉट यहाँ पर देख रहे हैं हाथ हिला रहे हैं ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द लॉन्च प्रोफाइल एंड दिस इज अबाउट द ओवरऑल लेट्स इंजॉय द लॉन्च ये कल भी लॉन्च हुआ था लेकिन इंजन इग्नाइट होने के जस्ट वन सेकेंड बाद मिशन अबॉर्ड कर दिया गया क्योंकि कुछ टेक्निकल इशू थी पता नहीं क्या पता नहीं <laughs> कुछ पता नहीं चला लेकिन आज फिर से टेस्ट री अटैम्प्ट कर रहे हैं लेट्स सी कि ये रॉकेट ऑर्बिट तक पहुंच पाता है कि नहीं क्योंकि अगर ये ऑर्बिट तक पहुंच पाता है तो ये एक और नए रॉकेट हमारे पास आ जाएगा हमारे पास इन द सेंस हमारे वर्ल्ड मतलब सब एक ही हैं तो एक और रॉकेट आ जाएगा जो ऑर्बिट तक पहुंच सकता है अभी तक ये ऑर्बिट तक नहीं पहुंचा है लेट्स सी लेट्स सी ओके लेट्स इंजॉय द शो लेट्स इंजॉय द रॉकेट लॉन्च अब देखते हैं टीम डॉट क्या बात कर रहे हैं जो आपके स्क्रीन पे हैं और ऑफिसियली ब्रॉडकास्ट को सुनते हैं लेट्स सी ओके You know, this is a demonstration mission. This is just simply a test flight. You really don't want to push your vehicle to the limits. It's nice to have some margin of error. You know, let's say, you know, during a certain portion, they might even be able to shut down one of the four engines later on in the first stage burn and actually still get to their, you know, target uh, destination, get into orbit. Or, you know, the second stage maybe could underperform slightly uh, if you have a lot of margin. So for your first mission, you really just... take it easy you know don't don't push it to the limits yet just take it easy and then slowly ramp into that you know validate your systems for now again today the teams are really just simply hoping to check off a few of those items that are just unknown that you just really can't test on the ground that is today's objective of course they're trying to get to orbit that would be monumental it would make them on a very very short list of private companies that it will have achieved orbit with a with a with a rocket with a entirely self-funded or privately funded uh liquid fueled rocket it's a very short list so um yeah you know that would be amazing if they reach orbit tonight what happened i'm checking away at some okay. of those that checklist if they get to stage separation that'd be amazing if they get second stage engine ignition that'd be amazing payload fairing separation that'd be awesome you know if they If they get even to their initial parking orbit of 185 by 300, it's a uh you know it's an elliptical orbit at first, that would be huge. That would be like, you know, I would break out the champagne for that personally. Um and then if they <laughs> get to their three they have to actually do an engine relight. They're trying to do an engine relight just to, you know, demonstrate as much of the vehicle as they can on this on this second try ever. So if they actually were to circularize their their orbit at a 300 by 300 as they're targeting, That would be uh two bottles of champagne not for me but just two bottles you know for all of us I guess I don't know <laughs> that would be that would be incredible that would definitely be like the the <laughs> ultimate so you know our fingers are crossed here for the teams um I'm feeling really good about this rocket though and there's a friendly reminder to those of you in chat you know we're here as team space just to cheer for this company we're we're absolutely honored to be here and to be able to witness this um in person and then to sh be able to share it with you guys at this kind of quality huge honor for us so just keep that in mind to, to just keep a positive attitude the the team see all this they they read this stuff so just send them send them well wishes and good luck and you know we're actually here to hopefully witness history you know this this i'm cheering not only for the rocket i'm cheering for the tap off cycle cuz it's it's time it is time for that um Let's see here. This is from uh, Alexander Ash. Awesome. About to get your Falcon Models Founders Edition. Uh literally every launch you've done in Luna Van has been a scrub. So let's have a go for today. We're we're well aware. The funny thing is I'm trying to make a video, a second video uh about <laughs> about what's going on with with Luna, you know, because we did the first part video 
about the yeah. build of Luna. And then it's like, all right, part two will be, you know, using Luna and to see a rocket launch. And so far, we have had pretty bad luck uh, between weather, you know, out there at Artemis, SLS. We, we kind of, unfortunately, for a couple days, kind of just watched a, a rocket leak a couple times. But, uh, you know, rockets, new rockets like this, you definitely, y it should be expected. We were, we were chasing some pretty... Uh, breaking edge, you know, brand new rockets that have never, uh, you know, this rocket, this is the second flight of this rocket, and as we mentioned, this one has really not been, uh, you know, they haven't had to do much testing because it's just gone so smoothly compared to their first rocket. Uh, the teams told me that they were, they had fueled the first one up uh, 18 times before they were able to get uh, engine ignition out at Briggs. Um, all four engines to ignite and, and do a f their first, like, static fire engine ignition with their first rocket. And this one, they said that they happened on the first try. So this is just a lot fresher rocket. I feel like it's just in a, in a good place. I just really hope the stars all align tonight and we, and we get it going. So it's going to be awesome. Um, let's see. This is uh, from Kev B. Uh, do you have a general tips for an average person who wants to fly somewhere and watch a rocket launch in person? I think my, my biggest advice would definitely be targeting Florida. I think Florida would be the place to go. Uh, Vandenberg has a handful out here, but... There's two, well, first off, it doesn't fly as often as Florida. And when it does, like tonight, there's, a, there's always a chance it's going to be pretty foggy out here. There's a reason that they built uh, a top secret at, this, at the time, you know, as an Air Force base with a, a handful of ICBMs because there's a lot of fog here. And it was easy to, to obscure um, a lot of the activities here from satellites. So this is generally quite a foggy area. It's not as easy to catch uh, a rocket launch with clear, clear line of sight and clear weather. You can kind of see the, the condensation and the dew and the the drips there on our camera lenses as well. It's just, that's normal for Vandenberg. But Florida, on the other hand, they're launching like at least once a week in Florida, it feels like these days. It's it's ridiculous. If you go to Florida, hang out for a solid week, real good chance you're going to catch a launch, you know, especially these days, like a something routine, like a Falcon 9 launching Starlink. Yeah, playing around it. Put it make sure my yeah. my, my biggest tip these for any rocket days, lover, the rocket if you're trying every, to go see a rocket, every week, see, every you have a week day. of time, then, uh, you know, that start day by your, day. your vacation basically yeah, increasing the with, the, uh, with the rocket launch at the very beginning work. of it. Don't try to, like, you know, don't try it's to book it where you're out in Florida for a whole week. You go to Disneyland, you go to the world, you do all these things, and then you hope to catch the rocket. You want to plan for it. So it's better to be, you know, having it so you have the opportunity to catch it, you know, if you're there for a full week or something. That's my advice. I am working uh, at some point. We actually probably need to reshoot a handful of it, Ryan, the tour of Starbase, because we... Based a lot of it on uh, what's that one road called? Remedios, Remedios, and that is now is that officially closed or it's coming up on being closed? Yeah, so we did a little tour of how to visit Starbase, uh, Texas, and we talk about how you can just stand right here, and we're just hanging out in Remedios Road, but that's in the process of being uh, closed down. So, um, yeah, uh, here's from Scott Manley saying Lompoc. I don't know. I hear a lot of people say Lompoc, but definitely. Definitely poke, not pock. I, I don't hear pock. Okay, um, within uh, 11 minutes, they are let's, launching uh, the rocket, Alpha rocket. <laughs> uh, this is really cool to see. This is from DJ Red Rover saying, I must say it's because of myself and Scott Manley that you're starting a new position as an avionics e engineer really soon. Thank you both for making me fall in love with space and rockets. That's so cool. I mean, that's the, that's the thing out here. The teams that I talked to, so many people just recently, in the last couple, two, three, four years, uh, started paying attention to spaceflight and got interested. Now they're working on putting a rocket into space. Like that is actually a thing you can do. You know, if you're interested in this stuff, pursue a degree in, in aerospace engineering or, or these <laughs> days, especially if you are someone that tinkers. I mean, you know, go uh, if you get a degree in, you know, or have experience working on, uh, you know, on, on jetliners or, or airplanes or uh, cars. You know, a lot of people come from the auto industry. That are you know a lot of the machining and a lot of the things are, are similar there. So um, yeah, if you're interested in this stuff and you're you have a skill like that, you have a trade, definitely check out the careers page. Especially like you know like I said, a Firefly. I'm a little bit uh I'm a little bit uh you know biased. I'm I'm quite a big fan of their transparency and the fact that they're allowing us to be here right now. <laughs> like that's huge. So I'm pretty big fan of them. But you know yeah, definitely poke around. There's there's uh people are hiring like crazy. It's definitely like the new industry. So the cool thing is we are actually able to pull up, I believe, uh, audio again from Mission Control, and hopefully we'll hear the next t minus ten minutes going in here. So I'll keep answering uh, 
Another question from Alex Kaplan. At some point, I got to get you guys. I should have probably pre pulled it up, but uh, Everyday Astronaut Doc, they're just on YouTube. Search uh, how to. Don't do it right now because we're only nine minutes away from seeing this baby hopefully fly tonight. Uh, but go ahead and search um, how to power a rocket engine. I have a, a whole video about the different power cycle types. This is the tap off combustion cycle, and no orbital rocket has utilized it successfully to get to it. space. Okay, we are ready. Okay, I missed what that one said. Awesome, this is all good. Let's keep going here. Everything is look looks good, and I I hope I hope this rocket achieved the range. T minus. Giving the call out. I'm, I'm probably going to be a little more quiet in the last T minus 10 minutes. <laughs> 8 minutes and 20 seconds. Fuel pre press will begin shortly. So, fuel pre press, that basically means they're getting ready to pressurize the fuel and the oxidizer tanks to flight pressures. So, they'll basically just use helium that are stored in separate bottles inside the rocket. They'll, they'll release some of it that's stored in really high pressure, release it, and that actually will pressurize the tanks up to flight Prop pressures. In work. Press eight minutes. Quick shout out to uh, Elaine and Jake Crafton for becoming members. That thank you so much, guys. That really, really means a lot. T minus seven thirty. Seven minute, 30 seconds. Just got conf left. confirmation here that we have our cameras rolling at the pad, recording in high speed. We've got um, all of the cameras that you see are recording in 4K60. Uh, and then Ryan has a handful of other cameras recording in even higher frame rates. So hopefully, you know, this shot's going to be one that I can't wait to see. The shot we're on right now, uh, you can kind of see the, the yellow railing that goes uh, across on the lower and section. Seven minutes, we'll have S2 TPC wiggles. So they're d right now they're actually doing the, the TVC wiggle test. They're actually allowing the engine inside the second stage. Uh, this is the first stage engines. No warning. Confirm no warning. So stage two wiggle test. Sweet. So the the engines can wiggle. Stage two right now they're they're testing its its TVC. It's a dual axis TVC, so it can actually wiggle in both directions. They do a little test while it's inside the interstage. While it's stacked on the rocket, they just kind of wiggle it to make sure it's good to go. And it sounds like it's... 6.30 FSW, please start a Wireshark capture on the umbilical port PCAP server. Complete. Thank you. No idea what that one is, but it's <laughs> complete. <laughs> <laughs> Alpha switching to internal power. That's fun. Yeah, and now that a uh, prop load is complete, we're actually going to be able to switch that out here on our screen because they are officially Came loaded. Six minutes. There we six go. Minutes. Prop load complete. Things are looking good. Let's see here. This is a, a good question from Mackie. Do they have cameras on the rocket? Yes. Um, we're not sure how much downlink they'll have. Uh, it's a relatively low bit rate. Um, Arms are opening. But we're hoping that we'll be able to show you guys something of Arms stage two. So the you can see now the uh, five thirty strong back retract is beginning. The strong back is beginning to retract. You can see that's what it was holding onto the rocket, and there it is reclining ever so slightly. CEP, please begin dispositioning <sighs> LCC gates for the T minus two minute check. Any no go at T minus two minutes will be an automatic abort. That's awesome. That's a great shot. Yeah. What it was. Five minutes. Strongback is secured in its launch position. <laughs> oh, it's getting exciting. Yeah, I'm excited too. So I was saying in this shot, you can see the yellow railing. Below that, there's some concrete, and that's actually a giant pit. Those that's actually. LC. That's this, the flame HHR trench. Cycle. Yes. So, yes, HHR we. Please run A2SHR cycle. We I'll do. Running A2SHR cycle. We do have flame trench cam. Trench cam. T minus four minutes and thirty seconds. RC, please pull the western range for concurrence at the T minus two minute check. 
in work. Can you please confirm we want to close SVHR following the cycle? Correct. Copy. We will leave it closed. Copy closing A2 SVHR. GC disable the pump. Copy. Pumps off. Copy. CD1 fluids, you want us to vent the QD for stage two? T yes. minus, I need to Copy. do a FTS checks, please. GC, please cycle HV 212, 213. Closed. Copy. T minus four minutes, FTS confirm FTRs are active in ranges transmitting check channel four. FTRs are showing check channel. Good closure. FTS, please send arm enable one command to all ESADs. Arm enable one send. FTS, please send arm enable two command to all ESADs. Arm enable two send. FTS, confirm when all ESADs are enabled. All ESADs are armed. FTS, safe all arm commands. Arm commands removed. Fly safe. So flight termination system is armed. They're looking to go, my friends. They are ready. We are ready. <sighs> yes. We are ready to see the Alpha rocket. Yeah, it's very exciting because <laughs> I don't know why. Must. <laughs> Look at all that. It, it is look good. Looking good, my friends. Just launch it. Launch it. At T minus three minutes, fuel bleed is starting. Aaj ne rukna chahiye. Aaj launch kar do, bhai. Prop This is prop visual confirmation of fuel bleed. Thanks. There will be a go no go at T minus two minutes. Any uh, no go at this time will be an automatic abort. DC, if there's a no go, please abort the auto. Hey, what happened? Copy. Oh. T minus two thirty. Yeah, it's good. So, guys, remember, within two minutes, if there is any uh, any hold or any reason to abort, it does automatically abort. And they would reset, but again, they have a two-hour launch window here tonight. So two minus two minutes. CE perform final yes. CC. This is the final commit for launch. Chief Engineer. Alpha is ready. Send it. <laughs> launch director. Okay. Go for launch. Okay. 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 Rock. Rock. Range green. Range green. We are go for launch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they hear it. They are go for launch. Launch director Megan Roth confirming go for launch. <laughs> All right, guys, I think it's time that I stand up here and uh, take a look. Yep, we are T-minus 1 minute, 22 seconds. Ryan's going to confirm everything is good to go. Oh, man. Luna, how's Team Luna doing? <laughs> All right, T-minus 1 minute coming up here. External pre-press is starting. T minus one minute. One last final reminder here, everyone. This is a test flight. This is a demonstration mission of this rocket. So wish the teams the best of luck. Let's fingers crossed. Just keep a positive attitude and cheer this thing into space. Let's see yes, 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 yes. the world's first orbital tap-off cycle powered largest carbon composite liquid fueled seconds. rocket. It remains acceptable. Vehicles in thermal count state. Copy vehicles transition to autonomous mode. T minus 20 seconds. Please, no. Here we go, guys. <laughs> T minus 10 seconds. T minus 5. Four. Oh, yeah, the camera is buffering. Yeah, that's a time for some of Four, three, two, one. It's off the pad. Yeah, we have nothing on tracking yet. There it is. Four's got it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Get ready, we're going to hear it here soon. 
I don't think we're going to see anything here tonight, unfortunately. It's just too foggy, but four's got it. Okay, no, no, no. Oh, I hear it now. It's good to see that rocket pad pe nahi raha, chala gaya. Lekin short dekhne ko nahi mila. Pata nahi buffer ho gaya tha. Unke taraf se hua hai. Hamari taraf se koi dikkat nahi hai. Let's, let's see what happened oh, next. Oh man, unfortunately it's just simply too, too foggy here to see anything. <laughs> we hear it very faintly. We hear it. Okay, okay. So far everything is looking great on that tracking cam. यार ये इनका क्यों बार बार बफर कर रहा है वी आर मैक्स की यस ओह बेबी लुक एट दैट इट्स लुकिंग ब्यूटीफुल ओ आई कैन स्टिल हियर इट यस फायरफ्लाई गुड जॉब गाइस दिस इज ऑसम Yeah, buffer can... Very faint rumble here in Vandenberg as the vehicle continues to ascend. All things looking good. We're coming up on the end of the first stage burn. So the next milestone we're going to be looking for is going to be Miko. So main engine cutoff. All four of those reavers are hopefully going to be shutting down here uh, just in a couple seconds here. And then there will be a stage separation and second stage engine ignition with that lightning engine. I told you guys. It's October. <laughs> okay, it's look very beautiful and abhi launch ho chuka hai. First stage ja raha hai aur ye kafi kafi acha lag raha hai kyunki ye private space company ka pehla rocket hai aur jo successfully orbit tak ja raha hai. We assume we we hope that it achieved the launch. Uh let's go. Main engine cut off. Okay, okay, okay. This is the Miko performing the main engine cutoff. We are the first like stage separate from the second, second stage. stage. Okay, second stage. <laughs> yeah, it's look, it's look very beautiful. <laughs> this is the second. This is the onboard camera of the second stage of the Alpha rocket. It's look very. good very amazing because it's i'm very excited and very happy for that <laughs> okay agla milestone is fairing separation uh, fairing separate separate okay 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 fairing separate ho gaya successfully it's Okay, I'm happy. Happy about the Firefly Aerospace. First stage हो गया, cut off भी हो गया. First, second stage ignite भी हो गया, fairing separate भी हो गया. <laughs> And uh, it's look good. Everything is fine. And we discuss. Uh, This is the uh, second test of this alpha rocket and it's look fine it looks fine and going to earth orbit low earth orbit kafi acha ja raha hai kafi acha ja raha hai kafi acha ja raha hai it's good it's good i'm happy if the alpha achieve the orbit I'm excited to see um you know Scott Manley mentioned that from from San Francisco he was seeing clear skies up there he's able to actually capture some some of that stuff uh you know when when lo rockets launch out here from the west coast everything's still looking good um I don't know if we're able to play mission control but I am curious if we have any updates um it's instead of just me looking at the screen going I <laughs> things are still happening but That is the status on my end. I'm seeing what you guys are seeing and it looks like a fantastic 
second stage burn with that lightning engine. That is just awesome. And remember, of course, you know, getting into orbit isn't just about going up. You know, if you go up, you're going to just come right back down. You know, if you want to go to space, you go up. You can, <laughs> you can cross the Kármán line at 100 kilometers in altitude, and you're just going to come right back down. But if in order to stay in space, you really have to get that velocity up high enough. You know, imagine shooting like a, you know, a cannonball. If you shoot it, you know, even a high-powered rifle, it's going to eventually come in contact with the ground. You know, not only is it getting slowed down T by the atmosphere. Six minutes. T plus okay. six minutes. Yep. Okay, Lost six minutes. So okay, launch away. It looks oh, baby, good. This is just awesome. It's oh, man. awesome. So uh, <laughs> I realized we lost our audio probably because we we did lose a camera. Yeah. I mean, we might have lost it, lost it, but you know, it might have got unplugged or something. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm just giddy right now. This is fantastic. Right at the top of the window too. Right, twelve oh one. This is awesome. This is awesome. Again, I'm already just. Huge congratulations to the teams here at Firefly. This is absolutely incredible. We it's so fun to be here and actually <laughs> able to help capture history and share. ETRS, it with you guys. LOS expected in sixty seconds. Hawaii AUS expected after a two minute loss of telemetry between stations. So that's because this rocket is flying away from ground stations. It's flying relative one hundred and thirty seven seven minutes. One hundred and thirty seven degree inclination. They are expecting to lose telemetry with the rocket for a brief period of time. So they're coming up on that period where they're expecting to lose, uh, just lose telemetry for a little bit here. And then hopefully they'll pick it back up in two minutes with a, a Hawaii ground tracking station. So that is expected. It'll be, um, but second stage cutoff is coming up here it's in about 15 seconds already. Seven minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, you are rocking. I got Seiko. Seiko. Second engine cutoff. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> oy, oy. Very good. Alpha rocket, alpha rocket achieve kar diya orbit. It's a very amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> they are, they are. <laughs> Chilla re bhai. Yes. T plus eight minutes. Kiki. TTRS 44 Bravo. Uh, yes. <laughs> this is mission control. Mission control. This is awesome, guys. This is that is huge. That's only second time ever. पहली बार rocket achieve किया है orbit. It's a big achievement for him. <laughs> चलो एक और हमारे पास रॉकेट आ गया जो ऑर्बिट अचीव कर सकता इट्स अ बिग न्यूज फॉर अस रॉकेट टू गेट टू ऑर्बिट दिस इज अ क्वाइट अ लार्ज रॉकेट सो वी आर गोना वेट हियर टू हियर इफ दे अम सो अगेन राइट नाउ दे आर एक्चुअली जस्ट इन अ इन एलिप्टिकल ऑर्बिट दे आर इन 300 बाय 185 इज व्हाट दे वर टारगेटिंग एंड वी विल वेट टू हियर फॉर श्योर इफ अ इफ ऑल दैट इज गुड जजिंग बाय द Excitement from the teams. It does appear that it's likely they. I mean, I heard some call out, but I, I missed it. But we'll see. Um, we will be able to see a flight camera here relatively soon once they get ground tracking back. <laughs> RCRF one on CD one. Please select Twy. Here we go. They're gonna work. Select in Hawaii in three, two, one, arc. We should be able to see their flight camera here in a second, hopefully again. As soon as that pops up, we'll, we'll bring it to you guys. See, we'll we'll probably we'll, we're gonna bring up the flight camera even though it is currently frozen because that'll be a, a chance for us once that is refreshed, once they receive ground tracking from Hawaii, 
That will confirm that everything's still good after Seco, after second engine cutoff. And again, I mean, at this point, it's a total win. Now they're kind of going for the bonus right. round. They're kind of going for the... Right now, they are trying to achieve 300 kilometer and 185 kilometer. Perigee and Apogee. That ellipse may a perigee or apogee. So, perigee 185 kilometer they want to achieve, and the apogee 300 kilometer. This is the orbit of this alpha rocket. Now they are wanting to want to achieve it because they are deployed the satellite at that orbit. Thing to be able to demonstrate. So, oh man, I don't know. Um, Ryan and and Colin, I don't know if we have the ability. Uh, if we could start dumping the footage actually back onto the computer, we could probably try to replace some of. Th yeah, be second stage ka camera freeze hai. Let's see, dekhte hain kya update milta hai. अभी ऑफिसली कुछ आ जाए अपडेट यस 12 मिनट हो गया प्लस 12 मिनट हो गया लॉन्च हुए एंड इट इज अ सक्सेसफुल लॉन्च जस्ट बस एक बार ऑफिसियली कुछ आ जाए एक बार क्या चल रहा है क्या नहीं चल रहा है but uh, because because अगर पहले के, पहले के बाद डिस्कस करें तो जो सितंबर 2021 में लॉन्च हुआ था उसमें ये फर्स्ट स्टेज सेपरेट नहीं हुआ था उसके बाद ही ब्लास्ट हो गया था आ, क्योंकि वो पाथ से डिफ्लेक्ट हो गया था लेकिन इस बार इन्होंने फर्स्ट स्टेज पार कर गया फर्स्ट स्टेज मीको पार हो गया मैक्स क्यू पार हो गया सीको पार हो गया सीको इट इट्स मींस द सेकंड इंजन कट ऑफ एंड दे आर अचीव द ऑर्बिट इट्स ह्यूज सक्सेसफुल एंड ह्यूज कांग्रेचुलेशंस टू फायरफ्लाई कंपनी बिकॉज़ दे अचीव अ माइलस्टोन इट बूस्ट देयर कॉन्फिडेंस टू बिल्ड अनदर रॉकेट एंड अनदर टाइप ऑफ रॉकेट दैट अचीव दैट हेल्प टू अचीव द ऑर्बिट so this is the successful mission and the last congratulations firefly to achieve this milestone and i'm very happy and very excited to see that rocket launch ambitious rocket to be flying for your first time i'm just absolutely let's see ki agla update kya milta hai let's see here let's get confirmation um <laughs> Texting my friends at Firefly quick, just being like, guys, this is insane. I, I am just absolutely floored. Sorry. I didn't know a little bit unprofessional on my end, but that's what you get when you hire just an enthusiast out here just to help share some feeds with you guys. I mean, this is – we are working on the replay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're, gonna, we're actually going to be able to dump any <laughs> – any camera that's still on our network. We'll see if any of them lost. We're actually going to be able to dump some of the footage on them. And then we'll be able to bring them into the truck. It might take us a second here, but we will be able to replay some of them live on air and even play them in slow mo. So we'll be able to see the, some of those views that we weren't able to see in real life, er, in real time. So, man, this is going to be, this is awesome. How, do you guys have them for sure? Do we have confirmation? Uh, are, are we actually able to download from the Z cams? Sweet. Okay, yeah, we are actively able. That means we didn't lose, hopefully, too many of them. They are actively downloading the footage from the launch. We'll be able to replay those here in a second. Okay. okay. Oh, from what channel? So meanwhile, um, let's go ahead and answer a few more of you guys' questions. Uh, and let me let me give a, a quick shout out here to to some of the people here. I mean, this is just this this is the time I, I I'm. Unfo Please informally, I'm working as a uh, you know a representative Can you informally move your mic closer, please? with I really Firefly. To hear you. There is Kim. <laughs> yes. Hold on here. Cut to the wide cam. Oh my gosh. Yes. 
Yes, thank you, Kim. Yes, sir, Congratulations. Um, so my team is working through <laughs> oh, the that's remaining so cool. Look, we, channel, and we're just yeah, verifying pressures right now. And then I'll be back with you. <laughs> we, got yes, some, we got some champagne out here. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> thank you so much, Kim. Oh, that is awesome. So again, remember, their mission isn't even done, but the milestones they reach is considered by all means a huge success. That is yes. something that uh, you know they, they were dreaming of, and and to be able to do that again on the second launch attempt is huge. So uh, so let's let's get to just some some thank <laughs> yous here. I, I'll I'll keep the bottle of champagne out here, <laughs> and do some thank yous. Um, let's see here. So uh, I need to thank our team here. I mean, we have a, a, you, a um, team that's so far. Um, I think we might want to cut the comms actually, and we can pull up just a, a tight camera. We are again waiting, awaiting downlink. Uh, so okay, hopefully. Okay, this is LD on Countdown oh, hold Net. On. Let's listen in actually. Everybody uh, watching and waiting for data. Uh, we flew over Hawaii. Um, KSAT was not able to get our telemetry over Hawaii. Uh, we suspect it's a KSAT problem, not a vehicle problem, but it's uh, that's where we are right now. We have passed Hawaii now. Uh, now we're in the dead time between Hawaii and Mauritius. Uh, once we attempt to pick up there, hopefully, we'll get data from the second stage afterwards. So stay tuned on that one. Mauritius AOS is expected at 4729. Copy that. Thank you. This is GNC on CD1. Uh, per the tracking table update performed at SECO, um, I get no Mauritius pass. That's not surprising given the low elevation pass that we were expecting nominally. Copy Will that. we pick that up at Hard B stock? I am expecting a Hard B stock pass at 0750. 0750, copy that. Copy, Chancy. Sorry, <laughs> I wasn't talking. About it. So they were they were talking there about uh, about the ground Maybe. tracking station. Can we a cycle? Uh, um, and yeah, so five five two. Uh, alpha, Bravo, sorry, I'm, I'm still hearing them in my ear. First, uh, they were talking about the ground tracking stations, and, and what's happening here is the rocket's flying west. It's flying over you know over Africa, and uh, they're trying to determine which stations will be able to pick up the vehicle. And and you know remember, just like when I don't know if you guys have ever seen Starlink or the ISS flyover. Sometimes it's really low on the horizon, so it sounds like the, the station they're trying to track up, uh, track uh, in, in Africa, uh, Standing by. is likely going to be very, very low on the horizon. They don't think it'll have a full on lock CD1, on that. I lost state data. Um, I thought it would, it would latch. So, all right, I think uh, but I, let's go ahead and answer a few of you guys' questions. I seem to have lost lost it would we get all right so uh yeah like i said i, I owe a, a huge thank you to just every everyone here again at firefly just for making all this possible we're going to stay on here air here until we hear all the updates and, and give you guys everything we know about the status of the vehicle at this point but again demonstration missions this is huge just being able to even get the vehicle through that many uh portions of flight that is absolutely incredible so yeah um let's see so uh no, there, there will. It does overfly uh, Africa at some point, if I remember right. But okay, okay, this is huge, and they achieved the milestone that it's very impressive. So, up to update here, that Firefly Aerospace Company, which was Alpha rocket launch, was launched today, has orbit to reach orbit. But now, exact data, telemetry data, which rocket ग्राउंड स्टेशन पे भेजता है वो फाइनल डेटा शायद अभी तक नहीं पहुंचा लेकिन जो इन्होंने माइलस्टोन रखा था इस रॉकेट के लिए वो अचीव हो गया है तो मिशन पूरी तरह सक्सेसफुल रहा तो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर द जॉइनिंग एंड थैंक यू सो मच अगर आपने ये पूरा वीडियो देखा इट्स मीन अ लॉट फॉर मी एंड वॉट अपकमिंग अपडेट जो भी आएगा वो आपके अब वो आपको डिस्क्रिप्शन या फिर कमेंट सेक्शन में मिल जाएगा लेकिन ये मिशन सक्सेसफुल रहा क्योंकि पिछली बार जब टेस्ट हुआ था 2021 में सितंबर में सेम रॉकेट वो ब्लास्ट हो गया था क्योंकि वो अपने कवरेज से बाहर हो गया था अपने पाथ से डेविएट हो गया था लेकिन इस बार फर्स्ट स्टेज सेपरेट हो गया सेकंड स्टेज सेपरेट हो गया और ऑर्बिट तक पहुंच गया इट्स वेरी बिग एंड दिस इज़ द फर्स्ट रॉकेट विच अचीव ऑर्बिट मेड बाय द फायर फ्लाई 
so huge congratulations to firefly aerospace to achieving this milestone and thank you so much for everyday astronaut to live host and uh that tim dot uh, thank you so much i'm I, I know that you you're not listening to me but thank you thank you so much for everything and thank you so much firefly and let's go let's uh this is the end time and i'm gonna buy so thank you so much bye bye and see you soon to with another launch thank you so much for the joining bye bye apna kya rakhe thank you so much Thank you.